All right, we're, we're starting. We're starting now. now starting now. Who who introduce yourself over there? Uh, my name is uh, Tony. How about you? Aaron. Dude, it stinks in here. Bjorn. <laughs> Steven. Stop it. All right. <laughs> Great time to go. It's a great time to go. Great time to HowStuffWorks.com, sleep has five stages. It takes approximately 90 minutes to cycle through all of these stages. This process is repeated continuously throughout the night while you sleep. Uh, stage one and two are sleeping states in which one can easily be woke from. Uh, stages three and four are deep sleep and are characterized by slower brain waves. The fifth stage is REM, or rapid eye movement. Uh, the stage was once thought to be the dream state, where all of our dreams occurred. But uh, in 1953, Eugene Asarinsky and Nathaniel Kleepman uh, discovered that physiological changes occurred in these uh, stages, like muscle paralysis and uh, brain activity comparable to being awake. Um, dreams can occur in the REM stage of sleep or any of the four non-REM stages of sleep. Uh, research conducted by Mark Solms, professor at University of Cape Town in South Africa, suggests that dreams are sensory reproductions of previous events shot up from the pons in the brainstem and assembled in the brain's parietal lobe. Dreams can last anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. They're typically visual, with the quarter featuring sound. Uh, blind people's dreams uh, tend to incorporate sound and touch. Uh, so there is a bit about uh, the what. So how about the why? Sigmund Freud postulated early on that dreams are a window to the unconscious mind, a sort of outlet for suppressed memories. Uh, Alan Hobson and Robert McCarley of Harvard University believe that dreams were random. Uh, then came Mark Solms again, uh, University of uh, Cape Town. He theorized that dreams are distractions so that our brain can maintain the sleep stage. Um, Robert Stickel of Stanford University suggests that dreams are some sort of learning tool our brain utilizes to aid in to learn new things. Uh, who is right? Well, none of them. But uh, technically none of them are wrong either. Uh, 
why we dream is still a mystery. Uh, why we sleep is still a mystery to scientists. But recent technological breakthroughs have better our understanding of these phenomena, and researchers are getting closer to an answer. So, in other words, I'll get back to you all on that. Uh, finally, I'd like to talk about lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming is the ability to control your dreams. Is this possible? Uh, indeed, but it is quite difficult. The uh, best approach to date is the mild technique, or mnemonic induction of lucid dreaming. The mild technique starts with the potential dreamer reminding themselves to remember their dreams before bed. Next, the dreamer visualizes previous dreams and recurring themes from those dreams. The final part of the exercise is visualizing what you, the dreamer, wants to do within the dream. This process is repeated until the dreamer falls asleep. Not only is this technique a chance to experience fantasies, but Dr. Stephen LeBurge, Stanford University, posits that dreams can be useful for personal development. Dr. LeBurge thinks that in a risk-free environment, individuals can better themselves by simulating situations that build self-confidence, strengthen coping techniques, or prepare us for harmful encounters. In summation uh, today, I talked a lot about dreams. Although they are still a mystery to researchers, I hope I've shed a little light on the random picture shows in the night. Uh, maybe you learned something, uh, maybe not. Either way, thank you for your time and uh, sweet dreams. Thank you, Boston Professor. That was the last one, Matt. That was the last one, Matt. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Clap, Matt. You still clap? You still clap, Matt.